If you're a figure drawing artist or student and you'd like to get more expressive in your work, in this video, I'm gonna share some of my tips on how to be more dynamic and loose in your drawing. Hi there, thank you for checking out this video. My name is Siobhan. I share videos about a dynamic and expressive approach to drawing the figure. Each week I share tips and techniques for drawing. So if you're interested in figure drawing, then definitely subscribe so that we can stay in touch. Today's video is a process of a very short drawing. It was less than 10 minutes. And I want to give you four tips for making quick dynamic drawings, even if you are drawing from a photo reference. Leave me a comment below if you've got any questions and definitely let me know if you find that this, um, this way of drawing is particularly challenging in your own drawing practice. So today I'm drawing with charcoal on paper and as always I'll leave a link to the exact pose that I'm working from in the description. I've been coming back to this particular model reel again and again. It's over on the New Masters Academy YouTube channel. And this particular model is really dynamic and wonderful to draw, um, especially for gesture drawing. So check it out and let me know if you also make a drawing of this pose. Post it up on Instagram at drawinglife.io and tag me if you do. So my first tip for expressive drawing is that it definitely makes a difference what materials you use. And I think I have mentioned this a lot of times in previous videos, but it's an important one. So I would say choose something that's going to give you strong dynamic marks. A drawing tool like a graphite pencil, for example, might not necessarily give you the results that you are looking for if you want to make you know, strong gesture drawings. I'm not saying that it won't, like I definitely find things like um, a pencil or even a ballpoint pen can be great, but just experiment for yourself and find out which works for you. And if you haven't tried drawing with charcoal, then definitely give that a go. Next up, in order to make an expressive figure drawing that also reads as a figure, you need to balance a subtle, careful mark with those bold and dynamic marks. Another way of putting this is that you need to balance detail with abstraction. So my advice is firstly lay down some very, very loose, rough, abstract marks, marks that you feel correspond to the gesture that you see in the pose. Work on those marks, um, follow the overall forms of the figure, you know, the shadow areas, the direction or the tilt throughout the pose, then once you have a fair idea of what the pose feels like in your drawing, you can start to pick out some areas for a little bit more detail. For me personally, I look for areas of tension within the pose. They're usually areas that seem to express, you know, the tension or balance uh, in the figure. Uh, that could be the angle of the knee, that's causing the legs to bend, or you know the way the arm is bent, causing the muscles to flex. Certainly look for any tilt or twist in the torso and consider marking that up in your drawing with more emphasis. The next tip then that I have for you is to choose a short time limit and stick to it. Often the one minute or the two minute gesture drawings that we do at the start of a live drawing session, for example, you know, they're great to like loosen up and make good gesture drawings. But then again, there are times when you want to work a little bit longer than one or two minutes and make a drawing that is in a sense a bit more finished. I know that sounds a bit counterintuitive to think of a gesture drawing as a finished drawing because most people tend to only associate gesture drawing as being a warm up exercise. But personally, I find it's less of a technique or an exercise and more of an overall approach to drawing as a whole. 
So that's why I prefer to use gesture drawing over a slightly longer time frame like five minutes or ten minutes. And you know, I try to see if I can make a strong, powerful drawing that captures that first impression of the figure, but at the same time works as a completed expression of what I wanted to say about the pose. So choose a time frame like five minutes or ten minutes and stick to it. You'll often find that the more you work into a drawing, the more likely you are to lose that dynamic quality. So know when to stop, when to leave it exactly as it is. I think that does actually come with practice, so having a time limit um, in the beginning is very, very useful. Then, as I say, put the pencil or the charcoal down, step away um, and reflect on your drawing. And that leads me to my last, most important piece of advice for achieving expressive gesture drawing, and that is don't overly compare your drawing to the photo. You know, at this stage, you probably have a really wonderful expressive drawing, and the temptation now would be to fix it so that it more closely resembles the photo reference. This is just a very normal sort of reaction because the photo is an unmoving static reference. But don't do this, leave your drawing as it is, because this is a drawing that more than likely perfectly reflects how you interpreted the pose. And the more you make it look like a photo, the more you'll lose that quality. So I hope these tips help you to achieve that loose dynamic quality in your drawing. It's always a good thing to spend some of your figure study time on mark making and expression. So even if you don't keep these drawings, it's a very good practice in the long run. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on this process. As always, I'd love to hear from you. I love reading your comments and exploring these ideas further with you. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.